So I thought, uh, I mean, we thought uh, we will have some session to enlighten our members regarding the uh, medical legal aspects of our clinical practice. In fact, the general characteristic of a medical practice is whenever he or she hears about uh, case, court and all, they will get scared. So nothing will enter their head. Actually, it is nothing like that. You have to be bold enough to, there are people, hardcore criminals walking around scot free and we are doing so much of work for the society and then being afraid of small small things to harass us that is the thing that is why everyone should be knowing about their uh, all these their rights and all this stuff so you may be knowing him as a veterinary surgeon that is different then uh, he will be talking on the liabilities of a medical practitioner what we should be aware of then we have we are fortunate to have dr anand vinayakar postgraduate diploma in medical law and ethics from nlsu bangalore uh, he also happens to be a great ROP specialist, uh, passionate ROP specialist, international, but he is having another role here. So we will directly go to Dr. Ashok Nandraj, then our uh, Thank you Dr. Mahesh for that uh, kind introduction and let me introduce Dr. Mahesh also. He is not only a veterinary surgeon, he also uh, holds a postgraduate diploma in uh, uh, consumer related law. So he is also even more qualified than all of us. So the topic for me is liabilities of a medical practitioner and related laws. So the whole concept is, you know, as far as uh, medical negligence and things go on. See, what exactly is our stand and where have we gone wrong? Now, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? So negligence, so the whole concept is, you cannot expect a doctor to know everything. So uh, the whole concept is, you have to provide reasonable care to the patient. Uh, you have to provide standard of care to the patient and if you fail in it, then only it becomes negligence. Error of judgment is never negligence. Okay, because we are all human beings, you cannot be perfect all the time and in, in retrospect, you can always say that somebody is right or wrong. So, medical malpractice occurs when a healthcare provider strays from the recognized standard of care in the treatment of a patient. So, that is the basic concept. Now, what is standard of care? Now, standard of care is defined as what a reasonable, prudent medical provider would do or would not have done under the same or similar circumstances. So if you look at negligence, it is not only that you are doing, it is not doing also is ne medical negligence. Act, uh, not acting as well as acting in the improper way. So if you if you are doing some medical negligence, so what are the aspects of law that you come under? There is something called as a tort. Tort means it is a civil wrong. Okay, it is, it is a civil wrong. So civil wrong means if you do a wrong, what is the remedy? Remedy is damages. Damages means you have to pay some compensation as money. Okay. And in tort, the problem is the damages are called unliquidated damages. So it is not that the amount of money that you have to give is determined before. The court will hear, the person who has been wrong will say that I want this much money. And based on that, the court will decide how much money should be paid to the Greek, uh, person who is affected or don't have to pay. So that is called as unliquidated damages. Unliquidated damages means damages, the amount of quantum of damage that is paid is not determined before. And the second uh, aspect is it will come under the Indian Penal Code. So Indian Penal Code means it is a criminal offence. It is not a civil liability, it becomes a criminal liability. So criminal liability means, see, you, you are operating on a patient. I am not talking about off the court. You are operating on a patient and the patient dies. See, how can you say the doctor has murdered the patient? So there, it will not come under first degree murder or anything like that. It will come under a, if you have not taken proper care and because of that the patient dies or something happens, it will come under rash and negligent action on the part of the doctor. So it will be like culpable homicide not amounting to murder. It will come to that, that stage. Okay, it is not that you have murdered somebody, but something uh, like you have driven a car very rashly, you have hit on somebody, something like that. Because in criminal liability, there are two aspects. One is mens rea and uh, the second one is actus rea. Mens rea means you should have an intent to perform the criminal act. Like you know, you cannot, you cannot just say that you know, uh, you, 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 because of your action somebody died. Uh, the, it has to be proved uh, that the person had an intention to kill him and that's why he killed him. Then only it becomes a first degree murder. Otherwise it will become a rash and negligent action uh, resulting in murder. Uh, so, this is what is criminal liability as far as medical legal uh, cases are concerned. Uh, civil liability is between two individuals, uh -huh. while criminal liability yes. is between the individual and the state. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that comes when you conduct a case. So when somebody is murdered, 
So the victim doesn't have to give a case. The state will uh, run the case for that person. Because, you know, in a criminal case, it is the state versus the person, the defendant, who has committed the crime. In civil liability, as Dr. Mahesh said, it is between individuals. It is the state nowhere comes in the picture. Then comes the Indian contract right? Now, suppose you are treating a patient. There is a contract between you and the patient. You have taken some money, you have said that you will cure the patient. So, that is a contract. So, here, the quantum of money is liquidated damages. Because you know the quantum of money. You have taken this much money, you have said that you are going to treat. So, under Indian Contract Act also, there can be a breach of contract if the disease is not cured or whatever. So, that is liquidated damages. Probably you have to repay the money that you have taken from him for surgery or whatever. And then comes the Consumer Protection Act. So, the main point here is, you know, see, if you run a civil case, criminal case, it is a laborious process. See, like our state, what it does is, it always stands with the victim. Okay, so if you look at the uh, accident, the person might have been drunk and he is walking zigzag in the center of the road. It is not your fault that, you know, your car hit the person and he died. But uh, the victim will always be protected because you know, he is the affected person. So, the basic concept of laws in our country is protect the victim. So, Consumer Protection Act is an act where the person need not go through the ordinary courts. They have a quasi-judicial system which is equivalent to the civil court which has been established so that consumers uh, have an easy way to, uh, what do you say, address their grievances and claim compensation. So, Shanta uh, uh, case that Dr. Mahesh will say, like, you know, our uh, medical profession also comes under the Consumer Protection Act. But if you see, consumer means, see, you, a you, uh, person is providing you services, you are giving him money. So, that is the relation between the consumer and the client or the person who is receiving the service. If you see, lawyers don't come under Consumer Protection Act. <laughs> Uh, lawyers, there is no consumer protection. If the lawyer has uh, is negligent, he doesn't come for your hearing because of his negligence. Uh, case goes off. He doesn't come under consumer. But lawyers, doctor, they also take money. They also give service. So, see, I'm not saying that uh, like, you know, somebody is right or wrong, but uh, life is always not fair. Okay. So this is what I said because you know negligence doesn't arise just because of a wrongful conduct by a person it is essential that misconduct has caused foreseeable harm to the other if there is no harm there is no negligence so as far as a civil liability is concerned there should be negligence as well as because of that there should be an injury also to the person who is to whom the damage has been done and the money everything will depend on the extent of loss and i just talked to you about unliquidated damages now as a breach of contract as a crime so guilty mind and the guilty action, mens rea and actus rea, that is what we say. Now, this is uh, medical uh, negligence under consumer. Then there is another concept called res ipsa ligator. Res ipsa ligator means the truth speaks for itself. That is what we have learned in forensic medicine. Suppose, in always in, uh, in any case, it is the duty of the person who has been affected. The victim has to prove that the other person has done wrong. He is guilty. But there are certain situations, suppose in a rape case, the victim doesn't have to prove, the person against whom the allegation has been made, he has to prove that I have not committed rape. In a similar situation, there is something called as res ipsa liquidator in medical negligence also. Suppose somebody operates, he accidentally leaves a scissors inside the abdomen and he closes. After six months, they find out that there is a scissor inside the stomach. Now the person gave, because of his operation, scissor is there inside my stomach and because of that I have been put a lot of problem. Now the victim doesn't have to prove that this doctor has put the scissor. It is now the duty of the doctor to say that I have not put the scissors inside it. Automatically it has come from somewhere, I don't know, like that. <laughs> okay? So that is the concept. So this is what, when the result is so obvious, the damage is so obvious, that in that situation, it is the duty of the doctor to prove that. So, this all comes under gross negligence. We are not talking about, you know, uh, ordinary situations. So, this is all. So, liability in uh, medical legal cases, civil liability, then criminal liability and all that. So, details and all, Dr. Mahesh will say. Now, you have done, you suppose you have, you have been negligent or you have not been negligent and the case has been put, put, put against you. So, what are you going to do? Now, why a case comes, why a medical legal case comes is usually it's because of a communication gap. You have not really, see, mistakes can happen. Patients are really forgiving. If you really talk to them, communicate with them, etc., usually they are okay. They don't do anything. Another thing is you refer the patient to somewhere and their PGs will see, fellows will see. And you know, you know, you have been a fellow, you have been a PG. In your enthusiasm, you say, who has done this? Uh, like that, you will say, I mean, that stays in the mind of the patient. 
and he feels something wrong has been done. And an unfavorable outcome. If what is not decided is the outcome, then again patient is going to feel bad. Now, once you get a consumer protect, once you have a medical legal issue, 99.99% will be filed only in a consumer protection form. Okay. So where you have to file uh, is like if if there is up to 50 lakhs damage is claimed, it it has it is filed in the district form. Now there is something called as territorial, territorial and pecuniary jurisdiction. Pecuniary means the amount of money you are claiming. Depending on that, you have to file in district, state, or uh, national form. And territorial means if the uh, incident has happened in uh, Calicut, then you have to file in the district form Calicut. Or where the victim is staying, or where the person who has committed the wrong is staying, that is where you have to file the particular case. Now, if the amount of money claimed is between 50 lakhs and 2 crores, then you have to file in the state form. And above 2 crores, you have to file in the national form. So, it depends on the amount of compensation that is claimed, that is where the uh, uh, case is going to be held. Now, why people file in a consumer protection forum is, you know, see, uh, the amount of money, see, usually in a civil case, when you file a case, you, know, you have to pay 10% uh, or 5% of the amount of money you are claiming in that particular suit. You have to put it there as court fee. Then only you can file the case. So, if you're uh, claiming 100 crores, see, you have to spend a lot of money, you know, just to file a case. But in consumer protection courts, the amount of money, if it's like less than 25 lakhs, you don't have to pay any money. Even. And the process is so easy, you just have to write in a plain sheet of paper and give it. And the person who is agreed, he himself can conduct the case if he wants. So all these, you know, video conferencing, uh, I mean like, you know, email uh, communications, all these facilities are available to the uh, agreed. So everyone goes for consumer protection. And there is a time bound also. Uh, within four to six months, it has to be cleared. Usually it doesn't happen like that, but see, that's what they say. Now see, up to five lakhs, you don't have to pay any code fee. About 10 crore, if you claim, you have to pay a court fee of only 7,500 rupees. See, poya you have sent some money, if you get money, it's good, no? It's very good. So that is so. See, that is what I'm trying to tell you. This consumer protection forum is a forum for the victims. It is not a forum for the doctors, you have to understand very clear. It is so friendly to the victims. But, see, doctors are also given a fair chance. It's not that they are being victimized. But you should understand the trend. So you have to be very careful and be very vigilant. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now, there is something called as limitation period. So, suppose, you know, an incident has happened. A cause of action. We call it in law, there is something called as cause of action. That is the incident which, lead, which led to the particular case. So, two years is the limitation period. Okay. Then, as Dr. Anand Dinekur, he is an ROK specialist. So, when the, when the child is very, very young, the child loses its size because of negligence or not negligence, whatever it may be. So, don't think that this child, now two years are over, he cannot give case against him. The limitation period for a child, it starts only after the child becomes a major. So, 18 years, up to 22 years, the child can give a case against you. Uh, that is very, very, very important. Okay. And uh, the second thing is, this two years limitation period can be condoned also. It is not that it is followed very strictly. Now, the patient says, I was in the ICU for three years, I could not give a case. Or I was in Gulf, I was in Antarctica. Then, the, okay, you can give. They will condone it. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. This forum is for the victim. It is not for the doctor. Now, see, this is all what I said, you know. And what happens is, you will uh, you will get a notice from the forum once they have accepted the case. And accepting the case also, they are very careful. It will be scrutinized, scrutinized, scrutinized. And once they feel that there is something, you will you will get a notice from the consumer protection forum. And then you have to give a reply within 30 days. That is very, very important. See, suppose you don't give a reply, it is as if, you know, you, you don't have a difference. It will be decided solely based on the, uh, whatever, whatever arguments of the client and not the doctor. And the maximum time given is up to 90 days to give a reply. And for 90 days, you have to give sufficient reason why I couldn't give a reply within 30 days. Okay. Then uh, the reply will come. Then again, they will, uh, what do you say, uh, they will give an, another another reply to your reply that you have given. And then if you look at district forums, you have to go there and fight your case. You can go physically to the court and fight your case. If you look at the national forum, it is through interrogatories. There are something called as interrogatories. Interrogatories means whatever questions you want to ask the <coughs> person who is affected or the uh, patient wants to ask you, it will be in a question answer form. Question answer form, which will be mailed to the person. It will be mailed to the court, the court will give it to the concerned person. The answer will be taken and it will be you know, uh, 
uh, what do you say, considered by the particular code. It is not through direct physical uh, interaction. It is something called as interrogatories. You don't have to go to the National Commission to fight your case. Through your lawyer, you can file interrogatories and discoveries. Another important thing is there, are, there is no surprise in litigation. That is the most important thing. So you see in movies, suddenly a new evidence will come. Everybody is surprised. See, I am gone. No, not like that. And now whatever evidence you have, whatever evidence the person who is damaged has, they have to share. You have to give sufficient time to each party to examine the evidence and give your defense. So that way you don't have to worry. And then comes a judgment and you know it can be converted into a decree. Decree means a short form of the judgment. Now, what is the appeal? So, suppose district forum, you lost your case, you can appeal to the state forum. State forum, you lost your case, you can appeal to the national forum. National forum, you lost your case, you are a candidate Supreme Court. So, that's what. And in Supreme Court, if you have to appeal, you have to pay 50,000 or 50% of the amount that has been given as award to the victim. So, that much amount you have to pay and then only you can file an appeal in the Supreme Court. So that is the basic thing. So the most important thing is, you know, when you have a case, the lawyer doesn't know anything about medicine. The lawyer, you think he is going to spend uh, 30 days or one year looking only into your case and making arguments. You should not feel that like a like a doctor, like you know, uh, you have gone to the doctor. Now it's not my, it's not like that. It is your responsibility because you want to win your case, and lawyer doesn't come under consumer protection also. So it's very important that you go with the lawyer, call him. Give him interactions, give him input, write things for him. Then only there is any chance that you are going to win the case. So the thing is, law favors always the vigilant. Vigilant goes not not dormant goes. That is the Latin saying. Law always favors, uh, favors the vigilant. Take all precautions. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashok. Yeah, yeah. He is <laughs> good in that. So, any other? Yeah.
who is more responsible, the surgeon or the anesthesiologist? Both, both, both. Actually, there's I'm something. Th there's something called vicarious liability. Vicarious liability. Uh, and so we are taking actually both. Okay. In fact, if you are post grad, your legs will not go to death. The let's talk is often much. But let's say your postgraduate uh, has an infection, post op end of. Uh, you as the surgeon will be liable. In you fact, uh, there was a very, very famous case from Kerala State, which then, you know, sort of a landmark case from where all of this comes uh, many years ago, uh, for camp-related infections. The surgeon and the postgraduate who operated were completely acquitted, but the case went against the hospital because they found that they had not taken permission from pollution board. They found that their operation data was not in a place where it should have been, you know, sterile. So they found all regulatory lapses. They never said that because you operated uh, and that 69 patients had post-op end of 61 out of them went to no PL, with some you know long 2008 case. So all of that can be protected if the documentation is. Fine. Yeah, and uh, one thing is, is vicarious liability. If you have a junior operating under you, the senior is also responsible. It's not that you know I have not operated my junior or no. Even the management is responsible. So that is what we talk about by Yeah, actually, the, the, it will be first uh, uh, doctor or anesthetist, then uh, medical director, then uh, hospital name. Like that, you will come. So, okay, uh, I will go to the next yeah, one uh, last thing. I yeah. think this two year thing, I don't think, I think you have to emphasize. No, no, it is I don't not think two years. It is not two years. It is that not two years. It is not. And, uh, we have had uh, you know, issues in many years after he, because the thing is, many years later, he realizes that, you know, some problem is coming because of the mission. Because, uh, of yeah. the, uh, because some job, something. That's so, on that time he makes. So the reason so, why that two years did not apply is there's a Supreme Court hearing on something called a theory of discovery. So basically it, it came out when there was a tubal ligation and uh, one, one tube was not ligated and she became pregnant. So she went to the consumer court saying, I did not know uh, that I, you know, I thought when I went for a sterilization. Santa was versus school. state of Punjab, I think. There you go. Yeah. So basically the court said that she discovered that she was pregnant only after five years of the first surgery. Yes. So how would she know that the, so even though it was not two years, it was five years, they allowed that case. Using that as a precedent, unfortunately, that two years does not hold any good. Yeah, in that case, uh, the doctor was found negligent. There was a similar case, another one where the fertilization uh, uh, failed, I mean that uh, sterilization failed. Uh, but that uh, Supreme Court, Shivaram was the state of Punjab. Uh, they, uh, they said that every complication of the procedure, the doctor is not liable. That is for the doctor. We can always quote that. Every complication uh, of the surgery is not the liability of the doctor. Anyway, and they also say that cause of action is continuing. That's what they say. That is not cause of